Gentleman yields back. Chair now recognizes the gentlelady from Washington. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Durham, thank you for being here today to speak with us about the report you produced looking at the FBI's investigation into Russian interference in the 2016 election. Uh, your report took four years and over six and a half million dollars in taxpayer dollars to produce. Mr. Durham, how many cases did you bring to trial during your time investigating the 2016 election? I'm sorry, you just missed part of that. because How of many this, cases this did you bring to trial? Two. Two. And in how many of those two cases did the juries vote to convict? Neither one. Neither one. Um, neither jury voted to convict the gentleman that you prosecuted. And in fact, in one case, the trial judge threw out one of your charges because the claim that you were charging as false was, as he put it, literally true. Mr. Durham, I think you were given an impossible task by Attorney General B Bill Barr. He asked you to figure out how to make Donald Trump's Spygate claims true. But you couldn't do that because you quickly realized that the claims were false. And so you set about, as many Republicans on cable news do, trying to find a way to blame Hillary Clinton for Donald Trump's woes. Mr. Durham, do you know how many people Special Counsel Mueller indicted or obtained guilty pleas from? He, he, they uh, indicted or charged a number of people, I think. It was 34, it was 34 people and three companies. Um, do you know how many of those indictments have, uh, 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 were of individuals who were acquitted in court? I don't know that anybody was acquitted. That's right. The answer is none. So I think the difference between your investigation and Mr. Mueller's was that Mr. Mueller actually found actual evidence of a crime. We know that Russia did attempt to interfere in the 2016 election. We know that Russia did hack into the DNC email server. And Mr. Mueller's prosecutions reflected that reality, such as the case of 12 Russian military intelligence officers who he charged with crimes related to the hacking and the leaking of leading Democrats' emails in 2016. Similarly, Mr. Mueller found repeated instances of Trump campaign associates lying when asked about their interactions with Russian interests. And a result, as a result of Mr. Mueller's investigation, George Papadopoulos pleaded guilty in October of 2017 to making false statements to the FBI. Trump campaign aide Rick Gates pleaded guilty to one false statements charge and one conspiracy charge. Trump national security advisor Michael Flynn pleaded guilty to making false statements to the FBI. And in November of 2019, Trump advisor Roger Stone was convicted on seven counts, including lying to the House Intelligence Committee and tampering with a witness. Again, Mr. Mueller indicted or got guilty pleas from 34 people and three companies. Mr. Durham, you're a career prosecutor, correct? That's correct. And you started working as a state prosecutor in 1977, and you joined the Justice Department in 1982. Yes or no, prosecutors prioritize bringing cases to court that have a high likelihood of winning? I would not say that that's the um, standard, no. So you don't think that to call an investigation successful, you should at least reveal some new information. Most of your report, Mr. Durham, is a rehashing of old news, including process-related concerns that the FBI had already addressed. In fact, that's why you said you were not recommending or recommending any further charge, changes to FBI policies or procedures. So at the very least, I would think that you would need to win some of the cases on their merits. But that's not what happened, and that's not what mega Republicans are looking for. Um, Chairman Jordan seems to be looking for any excuse to discredit law enforcement and DOJ who are finally holding Donald Trump accountable for his serious violations of the law. Violations, by the way, that Donald Trump just admitted to last night on Fox News. Americans will see through this facade, and I wanted to ask Mr. Schiff if he wants my additional 40 seconds of time. If so, I yield. Thank you. I just want to follow up uh, on my question before. Uh, Nora Danahy is a very well-respected member of your team. Why did she resign? I'm, I'm sorry? Nora Danahy was a very well-respected member of your team. Why did she resign? Yeah, that's not part of the report, and I'm not going to discuss internal uh, matters. Management did she resign team. over disagreements she had with you about how you're handling the investigation? It's not part of the report. I'm not going to discuss it. it it's not part of the report, but you, regard for but, you, but you know the answer, Mr. Durham. Why won't you tell us? I think because that's not part of the report. That's not part of the mission, and I'm not going to discuss internal discussions. I can tell you this. 
that with respect to uh, every major decision that was made um, by our team, every agent and every lawyer had a full voice in expressing their opinions, and we proceeded accordingly with me making the final Some decision. voted with their feet to the leave time, your office. The time of the gentleman's gentlelady has expired. I yield back.